good afternoon. You know what that sound means. It's Friday, 7-10. You already know. It's the weekend. You in tune to Rosemary's World of Cannabis on 710 Radio, iHeartRadio, Rosemary's World of Cannabis. And if you know I'm playing right and dirty in the background, we're back in the ATL with Coach. Coach, put me in, Coach. We're going to be back in just a few moments. We're going to go ahead and take care of the public service announcement. And we're going to be back on the air with Coach from the ATL. You're in tune to 710 Radio, iHeartRadio, Rosemary's World of Cannabis. Are you feeling like a shadow of yourself? Is your mood on its way down? You could be suffering from low THC, also known as cannabinoid deficiency, caused by 77 years of government interference via prohibition. Do you live in a medical cannabis state or the District of Columbia? Are you over the age of 18 and seeking non-toxic natural health, well-being, and peace of mind? Ask your doctor if cannabis may be right for you. After 10,000 years of recorded human use and 77 years of failed prohibition on the world's most extensively tested plant, the results are in. Cannabis has no known lethal dose and is arguably the safest and most comprehensive therapeutic substance known to man. Cannabis remained in the United States for until 1941, and cannabinoids are currently patented by the federal government as an anti-inflammatory U.S. patent 6630507. Human brains have cannabinoid receptors. Cannabinoids are lubricants in the human body. Due to prohibition, our bodies have been denied essential lubrication. Imagine never changing or adding to the oil in your car. The use of cannabis for low THC may cause immediate relief, including a general feeling of well-being, chronic smiling or laughing, feelings of euphoria, increased creativity or clarity, a greater appreciation for music and art, the desire to dance, increased feelings of inspiration, compassion or unity, a need for truth and justice, or you may wake feeling more well-rested than usual. It's undetermined to know exactly how many symptoms the use of cannabis may alleviate because of federal prohibition. There were dozens identified in the 1909 Eli Lilly Pharmaceutical Handbook. Currently, over 80% of the population supports the right to use cannabis therapeutically, and 92% of its users have declared significant non-toxic relief. The most common side effects, which are usually mild to moderate and may fade or disappear completely over time, are dry mouth and drowsiness. Other more serious side effects can include growing and repairing brain cells and DNA or improved vision, may prevent Alzheimer's dementia, dementia, glaucoma, nausea, and suicide may provide relief from autism, asthma, anorexia, arthritis, AIDS, cancer, Crohn's, depression, epilepsy, fibromyalgia, gout, IBS, insomnia, MS, migraine, pain, Parkinson's, PTSD, and spasticity. Use caution while driving or doing other physical activities until you know how cannabis affects you. May cause paranoia or nervousness specifically caused by real-life government intervention in your quest for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness in the USA. Ask your doctor if cannabis may be right for you. Brought to you as a public service announcement by the People's Plant, a campaign of conscience. Hey guys, and we're back. We're back. Three three minutes after the hour. You always know on a Friday there's gonna be some blurred lines. So we gotta call Coach Bay. I don't know what the hell's going on between ATL and South Carolina. But we have some phone droppage here. So let's go ahead and try this one more time. We waiting on Coach, but while she thinking about it, what are you gonna do on Friday? I know DC is popping hot and live. How about that? Y'all think about seeing Scrogger down in DC um this weekend or better yet? Hey, it's a lot of stuff that's going on down in Nevada. Then you got stuff going in uh, Colorado. Hey, it's a lot of things to do. Hey, okay, not a problem. I was just making some me time. Okay, guess what, guys? We the lines are unblurred. The smoke is now clear. Guess who we got on the line? We have Coach. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? What's up, Coach? Hey, man, I was trying to call you during the PSA, right? I'm like, I had time this down. I'm like, it's Friday. I know I haven't been giving no good shows this week. I know everybody ready for a good show, you know. And all of a sudden, there's no coach. The coach, the damn phone drops not once but twice. I'm like, oh. Well, hey, 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 Rosemary, I'm talking Rosemary. But, hey, I consider you about to I want you to know that you guys are almost like one. But you know, me and you actually had an earlier conversation before we actually talked about when this call and when this epiphany came about. But I actually been making telephone calls about you know basically what we talked about, and if we could talk about that on your show, that'd be nice. Oh, you know you that. And some of the other things. Yeah, uh, like I said, you know, when you come on this, this show, Coach, the show is yours, so you talk about whatever you want to talk about. But what I want to say to you, first and foremost, you got to quit moving around so my listeners can hear you. So you can go ahead. I know you hype. You always stay hype, but I'm going to need you to park your rear in gear, dear. 
Let me get ready to trade so I can roll that blunt while I'm talking to you. Hey, that'll be fine. <laughs> Whatever you got to do. Whatever you got to do. If y'all don't know Coach, uh, Coach is a motivational speaker. Coach is an activist. Coach is... I don't know what I, I'm just going to say it like this here. Coach is the type of coach I had back in the day when I used to play sports. I mean, he was a motivator, you know, the, that, that person that just, just make you want to get in. And, and if you're a football player, you want to get in there and tackle, or you're a, a, a quarterback, you want to get in there and pass that ball down the field by 40 to 50 yards easily. That's the type of motivator coach is, y'all. Why is he trying to roll this blunt? I mean, coach, then this is just on a side note. I'm trying to let him finish rolling up this blunt if I don't make him laugh too hard. Coach came to me by circumstance, believe it or not, guys. Um, we met coach down in um, D.C. in 2014 at the um, first ever cannabis festival down in um, D.C., like I was saying. And um, we met again by circumstance, by another great person named Roz McCarthy. So it's funny, you know, in the cannabis world, how you can go full circle. Can you? Yeah, I can hear you. If you, uh, whatever you're doing, don't do that again, though. No, I don't. Yeah. And, and, that, and, and that how we came together was wonderful. Uh, how, how, how things keep breaking things that are positive across your life. And sometimes we don't see them the first time, but, you know, when you know what they're saying, they come back with that you can still help that situation. Yeah, Coach, uh, you need to quit moving, man, because you're going in and out on me. I hear you now. No, no, I mean, I hear a noise in the background. Hold on. All right. Hold on, hold on. All right, we there. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I hear you now. Does it sound like I'm moving around? No. Okay. Let me ask you this. Do you have a wireless headset? No, I do not. I don't know. I put that radiation on my head. <laughs> <laughs> smart man. Smart man. Uh, We're going to make it do what it do and pray. You know, we're going to put this extra volume on this thing because, hey, a year from now, we won't be going through these things. I'm already claiming that, okay? Yes. I know you will have a wonderful show when you get ready. When they get it, when that, when that, when that, Real, uh, I want to say that, that that way gets behind you because of who you are, and it's going to push you right on up where you need to be at. And God's going to provide all those things for you. You know the wonderful service, that is real talk. Hey, thank you so very much. I mean, I do this out of love. I do. Every time I do one of these shows, you know, I do it out of love. And sometimes, and this, I'm just, you know, I'm a person that like to keep it real. With what we go through in our everyday lives and being persons that we are. It's hard sometimes to get up in the morning and say, okay, I'm going to talk to people if they're going to listen to me or not. Or worse, oh, I ain't got nobody to talk to today. I'm scared, freaking out that I got to do a show by myself. That's the worst thing you ever want to think about, you know. And when I called, when you called, when we talked to each other this morning, you told me you do the show. I was happy because the point is this. As most listeners know, I've been out this week due to Big Pharma and, you know, with the opioid um, situation, when you take them pain pills and stuff, they kind of wipe you out for a few days. And coach, and when I say they wipe me out, they wipe the girl all the way out. So I'm coming back out of the opioid um, wave, trying to get myself back together. So it takes a couple of days after them days, after you finally get through the nausea and everything else. So people just don't know what it is for me just to put on some of these shows. It might not seem like I'm hitting a couple of buttons and hitting everything else. You got to get people to agree to do the show. You got to get them to call in. And with the basic stuff that I'm using right now, and I do mean we're at bare minimum basics to get these programs out each week, I thank God that I'm able to do it. So, um... You know, like I say, I have to thank Rick Rainwright for, and 710 Radio for letting me do what I do best, and that's talk to each and every one of you, try to bring a little light and perspective and some knowledge about the world of cannabis and hemp. Yes, you heard me right. I said hemp. Miss Green Jeans ain't changing up the game. She just go ahead and, and putting some knowledge out there to the next level. Now, I'm going to let y'all know this right now. Miss Green Jeans is not authority on hemp. I'm green as grass on hemp. I'm going to let y'all know that now. But I got some trusting people on my team with Coach and Ricky Lofton and everybody else that's going to help me get up to speed real quick. Right, Coach? Yes, ma'am. And then you got to understand, like, we, the, the conversation we were having this morning you know, we were talking, I was trying to talk about the movement in South Carolina, how they're allowing them to grow high-strand CBD uh, uh, in that state. 
And so now they're really focusing on fiber. And, you know, a lot of people don't really know enough about the hip game and understand that, you know, his economics really, the economics is really in hip when you talk about, you know, competing with the medical industry. And I mean, even when you are fighting for medical marijuana and you want to grow your medicine, it's the same with the natural hip. Some people don't want to get high and they want to grow their own CBD and all their medication. And they want to do it through high strand or high uh, enriched uh, CBD strands of hemp. There's only certain ways you can grow it. So, you know, it's a fight in, within the industry about, you know, not only do you want to grow hemp, specific hemp, how you want to grow hemp, the types of hemp you want to get involved with, and the uh, streams of revenue that you can involve, you can get involved with. So, you know, and having that fight and then pulling those people together, uh, you know, we, when we talk about politicians and, you know, a lot of people like, well, the politicians they want to do is they, they try to hide it for themselves, this and that, this and that. And believe it or not, that's not even a problem. The problem is, most politicians just don't know what's going on. If they knew that was going on, they would have tried to either stop it or, you know, get involved with it so it can, you know, benefit the whole. But because it's only a few that know, they're able to sneak through and try to get things to benefit only them. So, again, it's, you know, one big problem is we all talk about it in the marijuana industry and in the hemp industry is awareness. We got to understand how to be aware and what we're being, what, what is happening to be aware about. So, you know, with that, man, you know, that's about this, Ms. Green Jean. I'm glad that you, when you got to talking about that him, and even the fight for him is about state access, man. You know, being able to have people that have a right to be able to grow that medication, that would be, you know what I'm saying, uh, an acre or, you know, 20 acres. <laughs> if they want to sell that and get it back as far as part of the economy, they have the right to do that. So, you know, in, a, in a regulated society, a regulated market, so, you know, it can make sense to everybody. Because, mm-hmm. again, you know, for those people, yeah, there's a lot of people don't know that North Carolina and South Carolina both has passed hemp um, bills. Both of the bills is passed. But in both states, you are so regulated on it. And um, they're, they're pretty much locking minorities out in both states, pretty much. I mean, and if you want to grow on your own, you can forget that too. You cannot grow hemp in North or South Carolina. So for those people that, that don't know much about hemp, and saying, why should I be concerned? You should be concerned because even though it's less than 3% THC, you're still not allowed to grow it here. Even though it's legal here in South Carolina, unless you got 20 acres and a permit. Notice I say keyword, in a permit to grow, you can be arrested and charged. Is that legal? <laughs> yeah, it's legal. Yeah, I mean, if I guess this is the thing I want to know is this, and I'm not trying to be funny, Coach, but... I I I I was a um, media um, journalist before I became an advocate and activist and speaker and all those other happy horsemen. So I got to ask these these questions. How are they gonna know first and foremost if they come across the field of hemp? You know, they are gonna go go through first and foremost to find out do you own that hemp? Then second of all, do you have a permit for that hemp? That's that time because some where well, they could be solving some crimes or something, shouldn't they? Yeah, but, you know, it's going to be a, a regulated system that's jumping off. You know what I'm saying? It's like, even the marijuana program has from seed to, from seed to sale. You know what I'm saying? So with that, I mean, even the hemp, they got it's going to be flipped out of security because if you're talking about high-strand CBD, that's just as expensive as marijuana is. Are you going to make more, even more money? So, wow. So, but, but now, like, we were just getting ready to go to South Carolina because we thought South Carolina had passed all these regulations that were going to allow us to come in and invest and do things with him. And now I'm finding out it's certain things that's been regulated now, not allowing them to grow certain things, but the conversation is just starting. I, you know what I'm saying? I got some of the top cats in the, in the industry talking about these meetings that they're not even, you know, they don't have the political individual contact to go in there. I mean, our lobbying is weak on that, on that, on that front. And well, we do have... Um... This is the problem. We have lobbyists here in South Carolina, but they're exclusive. If you know what I'm saying, they they play to yeah. one level and one level only. And uh, unfortunately, we haven't been invited to the table. We yeah. ain't. And, and, and then don't get it. It's, it's not. And it ain't a white or black thing. This poor farmers, man. The, 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 the average farmer has not been invited to that table because you got somebody trying to square everybody out. And this is the thing about it, Miss Green Jean. If they don't. 
team up, and I don't mean black, I don't mean like you the black folk get up, the white folk get up, you know what I'm saying? If y'all don't team up together, how y'all should have been talking about this problem gonna come in and fight y'all? Oh, but yeah. Together right now, you need everybody. That's the thing about this industry now. Everybody had to depend on it. It's like American Revolution, man. First man shot was a black man. Didn't nobody tell you that, but that cracked the American Revolution off. That means cause everybody got a, 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 a dog in this fight. Everybody got some skin in this game. You know, so we gonna get together, man. It's just like a team. Real talk. It's like a team. You know, most championship team is they pass the adversity of color because it becomes more than just about them. It becomes about the situation that we're trying to get involved in. And the people don't understand the fabric of America, man, meaning that we are a grown nation. We have some of the best agriculture in the world. And if we don't wind up getting these horrific crash off our back, or even be able to wind up putting ourselves in a position where we can address them and our words have weight, then they ain't gonna, they gonna keep doing what they wanna do. And they gonna keep giving us that bad stuff because we don't know how to organize, we don't know how to get together. We don't know how to wind up doing this. And we got the best thing on our side, which is the plan. This plant is changing lives and changing the detriment of the economy. And we can't get together and wind up saying, hey, man, it's enough for everybody. Let's run this thing down. You know what I'm saying? And that's what, that's what Ms. Ms. Green did. That's what we got to get to to let people know that, man, look, I ain't trying to get you to join my organization. I ain't trying to get you to join my company. I'm trying to get you to join my team. You know what I'm saying? We got to be on a team effort to try to make this thing move forward. Now, and, and, and let me catch on this one, and I'm gonna let you go ahead and talk to Ms. Green again. You know, we gotta get to my people, to my organization, the, you know, that they call themselves look like me, people of color, man. Y'all gotta get y'all stuff. We gotta, we gotta make sure we got our business plan, our strategic plan, our exit plan. We gotta make sure we got all these things in order when we talk about doing business. I can't say, yo, I'm in the, in the, in the cannabis game, I got some t-shirts and all I'm doing is trying to sell t-shirts, but man, you need to have somebody Selling the t-shirt, marketing, branding, wind up having your budget for uh, advertisement. Don't say make it to these events. Do what you can do. You're going to be a company, be a real company. Don't say I'm a company and still try to offer it out. Because that's how we get labeled as far as our business. Exactly. And that's what we want to say. We got to change the perception of this industry. Meaning that we got to get out those, you know, like, you know, like the hippie, the early, you know what I'm saying? You got some people, that's what they're going to do. But if you tell me you want to get into that corporate money, that corporate structure, that corporate thing, hey, let's, take, let's make it a betterment change for our industry. I'm going to still smoke their blood. You know what I'm saying? But I'm going to want to change it because I want my kids to come in and look at it different. We're talking about changing the perception of it, and we have to change the perception of it. And it has to be physically done. And it has to be done by the people who are going to be involved with it. Mm -hmm. And if y'all don't understand the structure of the dollar, man, if y'all don't understand what the black man has been trained in America to do, it's a spin. And we need, y'all ain't even got in the segment of giving it to my people about how we spend, spend this dollars, and we are the most dedicated customer. Always did. So therefore, our infrastructure is gonna be built when it comes to that. You know what I'm saying? We would rather do it with everybody, but if y'all don't, don't worry about it, man, because enough, enough people want to go and do their own thing and keep it apart. But there's a few who know that to get to that bigger goal, to get to that championship, to get to where everybody wins, it has to be an all-inclusive effort. And that's what we're trying to get to. Exactly. And I've been, Coach, I've been saying this for a number of years, that we got to reach across state lines and get this done because one group, one group from South Carolina, one group from Florida, one group from Georgia, one group from Alabama ain't going to do it. If we don't come together as a team, it's not yeah. going to get done because believe me, Big Pharma got their team. They got a team of lawyers and everything else and big deep dollars yeah. to do it with. Hemp or cannabis, neither one have them deep pockets. I mean, we are here begging, scraping, scrawling. I mean, everything we can do. And then some, and this is in all hemp communities and cannabis communities. You know, the first thing that come out their mouth is we ain't got the money. But this is the thing I'm going to say, and this is my point that I want to make today. All these um, 29 states and the District of Columbia, I want you to hear my words and hear my words carefully when I say this. It took activists to get you where you at right now. None of y'all got there by yourself. It took activism. It took people time, blood, sweat, and tears. Now that y'all got that together and you still getting it together, what harm is it for those people that's got these dispensaries and shops and everything out here? Kick some of that money back out to the communities that made that happen for you, one. Two, and invest in the future. And that's what's not going on in the commu cannabis community, period. 
I don't see investment in the future. I'm still seeing the cartoon character bullshit that's been going on for far too long. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. I ain't wanting to see Batman. I don't want to see Robin. And I damn sure don't want to see Wonder Woman. What I want to see is the next innovative things on how to get me well. Or better yet, in 10 years down the line, if any of my kids need it, they won't have to go through jumping through all these hoops. Anywhere they go in the United States. They'll be able to go ahead and get it with a card, a universal card. That's the things I'm looking at in the future. And Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, and Robin ain't got nothing to do with that shit. You know where I'm going with with this, right? Coach? Hello? I wasn't talking. I was letting you talk. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know I can get up on that soapbox and get kind of, kind of long. No, not even, no, 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 I listen, but I don't want anything like a bird on my side. I don't want no bird treatment while you're talking to that, so I just, you know what I'm saying, try to listen. Mm -hmm. Then jump in, but I, you know what I'm saying, when it's my turn. Mm -hmm. but, you right, man. If we don't come together, it ain't gonna happen. <laughs> it ain't gonna happen. Mm -hmm. but, so, so what do you want, so, so, so check this out. So now we're talking about, and again, you know, people say different between hip and hip. And you know, that, that, that's minor different because you know you can't grow the hip around the, the marijuana, but, you know, we're talking about Montana. Like mm -hmm. how they want to grow certain type of hips up there. But again, okay, Coach, you know, let me stop you for a second because, like, you know, my name is Miss Green Jeans, okay? It's a few things sure. I don't know. Why can't you grow hemp around cannabis? Uh, you can't grow hemp around cannabis because uh, the, it's a strong, it's actually uh, a stronger, like a stronger strain, and it takes the C THC, and actually the pollen, you cross pollinate, and it'll wind up taking, it'll take marijuana and turn it into industrial hemp. Mm -hmm. And so you'll take the THC out of it. Oh, wow, I so, did not know that. So, Oh, back in the day, this is real talk. Like when California had a real bad uh, problem of uh, uh, underground uh, growing, you know, people growing, uh, the government would take hemp seeds and go out and throw hemp seeds, in, you know, helicopters and throw hemp seeds out and mess up the people's crops. Wow. Now that's deep. <laughs> Yeah, so once it crop pollinate, man, it's, 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 that, and you can still remember that and investing. Because when you understand that it, everything has to be sectioned off in order to wind up having a productive market, and like sectioned off in the United States, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like these areas should be good for this, these areas should be good for this, these areas should be good for this. And then the type of hemp that you're going to, like the high trans CBD, again, you know, you're dealing with the nutraceutical market, but you're going to be competing with the government because that stuff really does kind of like, you know, like the stuff I've been getting from Dr. Mike, man, that stuff for my knees, my ankles and all that. It ain't got no THC in it, but it's been working like a champ. Well, I need to oh, try some of that, man, because I'm going to tell you like this here. The, some I've tried uh, the CBD oils and stuff like that ain't do shit yeah. for me. I'm going to be honest with you. And that's why I've been, you know, that's why I've been pushing the, the medical marijuana so hard because I have not found uh, a true hemp that works for me in my pain. I have not. That's what we buy, man. We buy all this old stuff they putting online, so you know they're not really you know, juicing down or whatever. That's why you got to make your own stuff, man. Like if somebody tells me they're trying to get rid of cancer, man, hey, man, don't go to now one of these dispensaries, bro. Go to get go get you some a bud that you know you got from a good grower and make that rich sister oil, man, and heal yourself. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? You don't need no doctor or nobody to wind up telling you that, and that's what they don't want to hear. You know what I'm saying? When we talk about real revolution, we talking about being able to take Mother Nature and make it work for the best of us. So, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, you know, they turn it, they, you know, we got to remember society is turning into an industry, but if the people don't get involved and constantly scream out safe access, safe access, because we need to have access to the medication that we can heal our family with. You know what I'm saying? But you got to know how to go out there screaming with the politicians. You got to see the laws that they have that are kind of ill wrote, and then you got a framework to stand on, and then as a group, we wind up coming together and talk about that with them, about how we can create safe access. Yes, and exactly. what you're doing is the people or the policy makers who didn't know nothing about it, they becoming aware, and they listening, and most of them will get some intern to go research it for them, bring back some of the information that changed their lives just like it changed my life, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And when you become informed, you're like, oh my God, I had no idea this was what it was. And when you do figure that out, now you want to be, that's why the first people we become advocates first. Because we be like, man, ain't no way hell all this be going on, and all we got to do is get to the plant. That's why we become advocates. Now the next step is like, now once you become advocates, you see all these people getting 
pay who really shouldn't be getting paid, and the people who put the, the work in, those are the ones who are really truly consoling. Those are your advocates. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's why I say now you no longer an advocate. You have to become a consultant. Yep. Because now you are actually showing these people how to change their lives because you put your time in. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And anybody who's trying to come and get work out of you and don't want to pay you, they are a user now. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Because there's no more advocating because you have put enough work into where you have to support your family. You know what I'm saying? If the industry is only white. And if we can't be creative enough to wind up putting these people, like I said, these black people that y'all all that y'all that these folks are incriminated. If you in the marijuana industry, you already know the game. You know what, what did happen. You know the traffic uh devastate that this 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 plant has caused on these people. Now if you don't want to be a, a part of the white and whiteness and righteousness that's supposed to go on, behold man has become like one of us going white from wrong. So if you don't know right from wrong, then you ain't like us, bro. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to be a part of this movement. And the movement is to make sure those people that you give it uh, effect, you got to wind up something out. Restitution. And I mean, that might just be a job. You know what I'm saying? It might be, you know, in these dispensaries that are going on, why would I be looking for qualified applicants if I got all these people coming out of jail? Pookie, Jerome, uh, uh, Tyrone, all them cats. They need a job. They need game for employment. But put them back in the industry that you wind up showing them down. That way they can be educated. They become law-abiding citizens. They can pay taxes, and they can wind up making the industry better. And one more thing before I give, give up your, you know, if I get up this box, this is the two box. Uh, uh, Michelle Alexander, uh, you know, made a direct correlation between um, violence and unemployment in your community. And she directly, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, kind of linked it, how it is, how it affects our community and how violence and, you know, all this stuff, cat kicking down doors, has to have to do with unemployment. So now we just put ourselves in a situation where we basically are now employing these people who are unemployable, deemed by the government. But the people came out together and wound up saying that these people need to have a part of this industry. This is why we need to get up and start getting involved with it now. I don't care what aspect, medical, hemp, uh, recreational, whatever it is, everybody has to come together because there has to be an up in, in the movement. That's why I always tell you, hashtag, I'm not a criminal because everybody that's in this movement is not. We real functional individuals and know what we want, but we got to come together. That is so true. That is so true. Hey, we're going to take a quick pause for the clause to let you catch your breath. Let me catch my breath because we're going to go to round two to this, guys. It's a lot more to it from me and Coach. You in tune to 710 Radio, iHeart Radio, Rosemary's World of Cannabis. We'll be right back after these two public service announcements. You know what? Right now, this would be your spot if you was with us here on 710 Radio. For more information, contact 710 Radio or Miss Green Jeans on Facebook or Rosemary's World of Cannabis, or better yet, contact me, me, Rosemary, on my page, or contact Rick Rainwhite. Anyway, you can have this spot. This is a 22nd spot going on 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25. You can have this spot if you want it. Are you feeling like a shadow of yourself? Is your mood on its way down? You could be suffering from low THC, also known as cannabinoid deficiency, caused by 77 years of government interference via prohibition. Do you live in a medical cannabis state or the District of Columbia? Are you over the age of 18 and seeking non-toxic natural health, well-being, and peace of mind? Ask your doctor if cannabis may be right for you. After 10,000 years of recorded human use and 77 years of failed prohibition on the world's most extensively tested plant, the results are in. Cannabis has no known lethal dose and is arguably the safest and most comprehensive therapeutic substance known to man. Cannabis remained in the United States Pharmacy until 1941, and cannabinoids are currently patented by the federal government as an anti-inflammatory U.S. patent 6630507. Human brains have cannabinoid receptors. Cannabinoids are lubricants in the human body. Due to prohibition, our bodies have been denied essential lubrication. Imagine never changing or adding to the oil in your car. The use of cannabis for low THC may cause immediate relief, including a general feeling of well-being, chronic smiling or laughing, feelings of euphoria, increased creativity or clarity, a greater appreciation for music and art, the desire to dance, increased feelings of inspiration, compassion or unity, a need for truth and justice, or you may wake feeling more well-rested than usual. It's undetermined to know exactly how many symptoms the use of cannabis may alleviate because of federal prohibition. There were dozens identified in the 1909 Eli Lilly Pharmaceutical Handbook. Currently, over 80% of the population supports the right to use cannabis therapeutically, and 92% of its users have declared significant non-toxic relief. The most common side effects, which are usually mild to moderate and may fade or disappear completely over time, are dry mouth and drowsiness. Other more serious side effects can include growing and repairing brain cells and DNA or improved vision, may prevent Alzheimer's dementia, 
dementia, glaucoma, nausea, and suicide. May provide relief from autism, asthma, anorexia, arthritis, AIDS, cancer, Crohn's, depression, epilepsy, fibromyalgia, gout, IBS, insomnia, MS, migraine, pain, Parkinson's, PTSD, and spasticity. Use caution while driving or doing other physical activities until you know how cannabis affects you. May cause paranoia or nervousness specifically caused by real-life government intervention in your quest for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness in the USA. Ask your doctor if cannabis may be right for you. Brought to you as a public service announcement by The People's Plant, a campaign of conscience. Hey, we're back. It's, 20, it's, 30, it's 30 minutes after the hour. You're in tune to 17 Radio, iHeart Radio, Rosemary's World of Cannabis. It's Friday, and I am fired Friday. up with Coach. Coach, put me in. Coach, put me in. <laughs> You in, you in. You know, <laughs> I was thinking about your position the other day, right? And we were playing football, right? I'm, and I even told Roz, I told Roz that she would be like a slot. Right. You know what I'm saying? And she's like, a slot? What's a slot? Cause I said, a slot's like a, you know, between the tailback and a, and, and, a, and a receiver to me. You know what I'm saying? Like a T.O. spear. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. So one thing I like about a slot is they come, they come down on that, on that, on that next to that, 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 that tackle. You know what I'm saying? I'll put the tackle and they go across. They usually cut across that middle when they come down. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. And don't, can't too many people have that heart going across the middle like that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you that ball, no, they can't. No, they can't. Because you're going out at a slot position, you're going out there like that. It's rough, man. I know something about you talking about my game of football. Yeah, that slot catches a, catches a lot of beating up, but they still stay strong in the game always. That's your slide. Now your position is different now. I would, you know, personally, I don't know if you, you know, your position would be like an officer, a left officer tackle. Mm, interesting. You know what I'm saying? Now the reason now, you know, you know, you made the movie, the movie about the dude, you know what I'm saying, blind side, all that, you know what I'm saying, which mm-hmm. is for real. You know what I'm saying? You are a, you know, and that's actually one of the highest paid individuals in the game, is that, is that blind side tackle and that, 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 you know, protect that quarterback. You mm-hmm. feel me? Yeah, you I see. Take the you feel me? That, that, that's the type of position you are, and and, and the reason you got to be big. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Straight, listen, with an ugly attitude. You know what I'm saying? With that, you know what I'm saying? So that I said, I said, man, that, that's a. I said, you know, right there, that's that green thing right there, man. Like that, like like you know, just a big offensive tackle. You know what I'm saying? Just stiff on the catch. You know what I'm saying? That's mm-hmm. the weight. You know what I'm saying? The quarterback just loving them. Cause, you know what I'm saying? I know I ain't got. I can turn my back and know ain't nothing hit me because I know you on my backside. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Man, I hey, I'm smiling, man. Dang, I'm smiling. I never been, I've been um talked about it in a lot of ways, but never that way. And I'll take that position with a smile on my face, man. Cause wow, that that that's a that's a huge job. I mean, that is a very huge job, and to do it in such in such succession as that, you know. And by me knowing the positions, you know, by being a fan of football, wow, coach, that's saying a lot. Thank you. Come on, man. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, we, we all are. And again, and if everybody good at their position, you know what I'm saying? Everybody believe in the plan, like I said. And then, like I said, we overcome the simple adversity. Like, like I said, man, even though I love, remember the Titans, you know what I'm saying? Yes, everybody, that's my movie. It shows you, man. It shows you how everybody around y'all, man, everybody telling you crazy stuff, you know what I'm saying? But when you get in together, man, you grinding with them cats you, you know you grinding with, man. After a while, man, I don't see no color no more, man. That's my man. That's my, my man. That's you know right. So when we get to that point in this game, you know what I'm saying? Well, I said I, I had to shoot the game up, old Mary. Mm-hmm. I can't say that I'm coming to you as a company. I can't say I'm trying to come. I, I had to switch all that up. I said, man, look, man, my 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 thing is the green rush team. You know what I'm saying? If you down with this group thing and you want to be down with the green rush, because it is one coming. You know what I'm saying? Right. Get on the right team. Start getting the right people around you. Start you know, getting them in the same concept of sports. Because they, again, those are the people who are sport minded and actually if they played it, you know, and if they played it at a certain level, then they know what it is about commitment and what it is about overcoming those simple barriers to get to the other side because they can vision and get to the other side. So now we can take the average, you know, and like you said, motivational speaker. I'm not a motivational speaker, I'm a coach. My coach just happens to be motivational, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I know I can coach like a champ. I coach championship. I had a champion. I had a champion in the league, went to the league, and all that. My son is one of the best football players, you know, coming out this year. Knock on wood, nothing happened to him, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He, 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 you know what I'm saying? So I know coaching, I'm good at. So I said, man, let me keep my philosophy simple. Let me take make cannabis part of my coaching. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And let me come at it from a coaching perspective. And now even people, most people don't even know my real name. They know coach. If you say in the industry, yo, do you know coach? Everybody, you know, coach. Yeah, we know coach. Coach, yeah. 
and people who really came and kissed it with me know that they have you ever had his scallop fettuccine? Have you ever had his breakfast? Have you ever had his medicati? Have you, you know what I'm saying? Them the cats, cats who know me and them break, they sit down and they break bread with me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So we make it a you know this is our this is our thing. This is where my mind is. And again, and I tell people, man, and people say you know, coach, you say you love everybody. That's how I end the conversation. Yo, I love you. You know what I'm saying? I really mean that because love will overcome everything, but we still have to have righteous mind to execute to make sure that we do overcome and not, you know, understand because we, we, we understand we ain't got there. We got to overstand. <laughs> <laughs> but you're so right, so Coach, and I think that's why I um flourish so well at doing what I do. And a lot of people say, what do you do? Okay, besides doing this show, I go to different events and I talk about my experiences with cannabis. I talk about, you know, the legislation, the, the bills, the everything. I mean, I, it, it, it is something that I get up, I, I wake up, I talk about cannabis. I go to bed, I'm talking about cannabis. It's part of my life because it is my life. Because if it wasn't for Freddie Dutchmore, Rick Rainwright, um, God rest his soul, V-Jams. Um, um, Raymond Hugey. I want to make sure I get that name right. Raymond Hugey played a huge role in what I do right now because these gentlemen, Michelle LeMay, uh, also taught me about this plant in a way that I didn't think about it. I've been using cannabis for over 40 years. I have no problem with saying that. But what I have a problem with is how I was using the plant. And when I went to Colorado to learn how to use this plant and use the gifts I have being behind a microphone, talking to different people in different organizations and using the skills I had as an FRG leader for over 12 years, excuse me, over 15 years as an FRG leader with, with um, the United States Army. Then I've also put that mix in with the Army career that I had. I mean, all that combined, everything I just talked about is in a team event everything i didn't talk about nothing singular everything i talked about was team and you got to have that strong team with you in order for you to get from point a to point b and so far i've been on some strong teams i've been on a strong team like 710 radio like one blunt radio we've been seen all over the world with All the weed pimp. One blunt and what's that? They need to be bringing you a check in now. You know what I'm saying? We got a check coming in, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you, hey, hey, but man, this is the thing the now. House. This is the thing huh? saying that, okay? These are urban. Listen, oh, listen to me now. PSA. I know what oh, you're oh. saying. I know what you're saying. Even though 710 Radio, One Blunt Radio, all these other radio stations, Hollywood, I'm calling out ones that people probably haven't heard about because they're out in Colorado. Yeah, okay. And the only reason people know about One Blunt 710 is we had to bring them across to the East Coast. If I'd have said One Blunt Radio or 710 Radio or any other radio station, Caliwood or whoever else doing their thing out there right now, nobody would know about them. And that's the point that I'm trying to make with everybody. If I can go from South Carolina to Denver, Colorado to Atlanta, Georgia to Charlotte, North Carolina to Raleigh, North Carolina and beyond talking about, and I'm just one little old individual. But guess what I'm doing? I'm networking with these teams. I'm putting teams together. And I've been doing this for some years. And I do mean years. In the game, coach. And the thing is this. It's still they don't want to give them... They, they don't want to tell you what's going to happen. Let me tell you what's going to happen, Mr. Mary Jean. Mm-hmm. All right, you already building your infrastructure and you building your team. And the networks that you're really building are, are going to be exclusive network because, again, we know information is power. And just like that conversation we had this morning, you know what I'm saying? I got a whole bunch of investors that can they can just run into South Carolina and invest and do this and do this, and they grabbing crazy loot. Mm-hmm. But if you don't have the insight on what's going on and what's really happening there, your know, investment dollar is really going to be put on hold and you don't might even lose it because you're trying to run the function of your, uh, of your organization as most people don't have the information to I guess you know to to, to trans, trans you know like transform mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying and, and, and get into the other lane because they don't have those relationships they might think they got a hook up and somebody got access to this and this and this but you don't know the infrastructure so you get beat 
So now you got to have kids that have them conversations like me and you had this morning. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And understand exactly. what's actually happening and how to get people involved in that process. You know what I'm saying? Now, again, you got some people, and I apologize, they're going to be mostly white people. I'm sorry, because they've been in the industry mostly. But they got the industry kind of locked down where they want to get paid. They want to be able to do that. But, mm-hmm. you know, you got people like me who are coming together and getting another lobbying group, getting another 501 c together. You know what I'm saying? And understand that now we're going to be talking to the politicians, but we're going to be coming from a different perspective. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I guarantee you that our team is going to sound a lot more correct than the next team if you want to get on it and you're talking about being able to be informed and invest and do the right thing. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And that's the thing. They got to learn to invest back into you got to invest in anything. Like all these super teams that you see, like let's let's take for example, everybody likes to hate the New York Yankees. Let's use them for example. What do the New York Yankees do that everybody hate? They reinvest in their infrastructure. Right. Yes, they do. And that's what I'm they using do. that structure is. If you don't invest in the infrastructure that got you to where you at, you lose key players in the game. Yes, you do. And you got people who coming in with money that might try to want to see those opportunities. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So, so like we got a lot of people. Know. What I'm saying in this, Coach, I'm trying to give a wake up call to a lot of people. You know, and right. they got and they got it going on. But if they don't get a game plan together, they gonna get swept under the undercurrent and they are gonna be out there on float. I don't know, man. I'm just I'm coming at them from a different way, guys. I'm, I'm like, yo, really? If you made money in this industry and you ain't doing nothing to wind up, you know, bringing awareness and uh, and, and actually helping uh, the my, the person who was affected the most that you basically made these dollars off are the reason you because you made it. If you're not paying tribute to the cats who kept this infrastructure up while you know it's been going on, then you know again you one of the leeches of the you y'all, y'all leeches y'all leeches. If you can't make this industry better, you leech, you leeching off it, man. Exactly. Like, I don't, I, you know, I can't smoke. You know, I come to the situation where I know I can't smoke with everybody. Exactly. It ain't meant for me to smoke with everybody. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But, but what I will do and what I will tell everybody, too, though, you know, if I can sit down and smoke one with you and we relax and we talk and we also get stuff, I won't deal with you, man. I won't be about wasting it, but if not, man, hey, I might be on my soapbox, like you said. I might be talking about, you know, God said, you know, that man can get along and all this other good stuff. So, you know, the, 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 the least common denominator of all religious religion is just righteousness. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, you know, no matter what you believe in and how you're doing it, if your fundamentals is that, then I want to mess with you. But if it ain't, I understand it. It ain't meant for me to smoke with everybody. All eagles can't fly. I understand that. You know what I'm saying? So I just want to deal with those who want to soar who love this industry and want to make it better through relationships and wind up coming together and say, man, look, man, I feel your fight. You know what I'm saying? I might not can give you all this, but this is what I want to do for the call. Mm-hmm. And the call, your call is actually helping what we're trying to get to anyway. So I, I even want to invest what you, you're dealing with because I see it is actually what you feel when we had those conversations. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. But yeah, well, I love how you bring it back to that point, though, Coach. Yeah. And that's all. Only thing I've been preaching, I mean, I've been preaching this shit for three years. I mean, the, the message has not changed. I mean, besides preaching that message, then preaching the message that you know that it 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 it, it, it doesn't never end. You know, a lot of people think, and this is another thing I'm gonna bring up real quick, and then I want to bring up what you got coming up this coming weekend. Um, matter of fact, starting next weekend on the twenty um second, correct? Yeah, we're gonna check it out. Check it out. Uh, you ready, you ready to hear it? Now I want I want to finish this thought first. Let me finish okay. this thought, and I'm a, I'm gonna wrap this portion up is with this, guys. We had the best opportunity in the last four years that's coming up as a group of people to get together in the ATL. You want to know who the movers and shakers is? Coach is about to break it down for you about everything that we talked about. If you any anybody that's anybody in this organization that we call cannabis any cannabis industry that looks like me coach and otherwise that's about their salt they will be at the atl coach is all yours all right yeah, I was, hey, you know what Ryan, and i apologize because i didn't want to move and i left my folder in the in the in this kitchen but listen i don't think i'm gonna be able to do it off the top of my head go right. for it now we got this event we got this event happening in atlanta georgia and you know again uh first of all we have to bring our people together just to understand you know what we have and how we can engage and a proper way of engagement so in that process basically what we're saying is we must basically have those meetings 
but while we're having those meetings, you know, we, we, we got the Georgia State Capitol. We got some of the biggest cats in him. And we got to know who him being, David uh, Smith, them, uh, coming down with some of the big hitters from Georgia, which is uh, Representative Pruitt, who's, uh, you know, one of the, you know, the big boys when it comes to farming and the agriculture and all that. But with that, we got people like Virgil Grant coming from California. Uh, Virgil Grant is part of the California Minority Alliance. We got Jesse Horton coming in from who's part of, uh, who's actually co-founder of the Minority Cannabis Business Alliance. We got Brandon Wyatt. We got uh, Todd Hughes, the lawyers coming out of Intravision, coming out of D.C. We got Mitch Anderson coming out of Chicago. And Mitch, I met him down in, in Florida. And Mitch basically was, you know, at that time talking about the industry, how the placement of jobs, how all these other uh situations are coming together that you know, employment almost like a Robert Half, you know, specialized in an FDA certification and if you were edible company and all that. You got Sterling Crockett coming from Pennsylvania. Now Sterling is basically like uh, I don't know if you guys remember that situation that happened in uh, Maryland, I mean Maryland, uh, about the license and they got food and you know, uh, Sterling is one of the ones who got his license with to uh, San Juan, Puerto Rico, opened up a, a facility down there, and then just one a recent person just won one of the licenses in, uh, in Pennsylvania, and which is um, and which is now a um, uh, one of the license holders for I think Southwest or Southeast one of them, Pennsylvania, which uh, you know he made he got one of the highest pool. So now when you talk about around the country, if I'm gonna say yo, our people got to get some of these licenses. And we now understand that it's a process that these people are getting their licenses under. They're paying twenty, thirty thousand dollars to have somebody professionally come in and put their license together. How can we say we can compete with those people if we don't have people on the team like a Sterling Crockett who are getting those high scores and we have access to those individuals who can who can help us put that when we need to put that together? Now that's when you talk about you got individuals in your crew who know the process. Now most people again rather right, go pay twenty, thirty thousand dollars for that. But all I'm saying is, yo, man, understand the game and understand the people you got to rock with to, to get those people who want to help you. But better yet, we want to invest and want to see how they can be uh, positive and prosperous in what you're doing. So, you know, this event that we're having at the Georgia Capitol, you know, you're coming down, we're talking about safe access. And again, understand how safe access actually, you know, touches on everything from cannabis to hemp to, you know, the, the recreational, medical, however you want to put it. You know what I'm saying? Because again, everybody should have the right to grow their flowers, grow their plants, their medication for self-preservation of self. That's period. That's Dr. Fabi. That's all the individuals who are really about, you know, talking about going back to the holistic and the natural movement. And because we have this open away epidemic, if we can get as many people who are against that, against the, uh, the, uh, those those type of uh, drugs that are, you know, again, crippling our nation, devastating uh, Virginia, uh, West Virginia, uh, you know, the Ohio, part of Ohio, man, these, these, or these places are being crippled. And until we understand things that we can fight with it, against it, and we call it holistic harm reduction, being able to get the medication that they need that, you know, they're not taking them that, we can start healing by and if we don't heal our nation soon, man, you know what I'm saying? We don't, we, we, we don't, we, we, you know, the, the, the craziness and foolishness is all, all on the television. You know what I'm saying? And it's constantly giving you those same stories because it's taking your mind off of what they're trying to really get, which is our health and our human rights. So, exactly. you know, let, let, let's come together and fight this. And, you know, again, Atlanta is the home, you know, again, of, you know, it's, it, it, it's hot Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? And we just come home for a minute in the South. You know, so I, I, I'm going to have some, you know, collard greens and cornbread. And some of it might be medicated. But you know what I'm saying? You know, we're going to give y'all some good food, man, some good hospitality. Come up with some good conversation, man. And we want to do another big event when we bring these people down. These ones are just coming down talking about the topic that we need to do for our big event in October. Exactly. We're going to have a golf tournament. And we're going to lay them out with it, man. But, you know, we it's just to make sure that we're networking with the right people to make this industry happen. It ain't a one time move or one time thing it has to be a relationship built and it's all about how you bring people into your house and you sit down and break bread with them and when you got a good you know a sense of breaking bread you're dealing with good people like Miss Green Dean you got Wise you got Virgil Brand, you got Brandon Hill you got Jesse Horton you got and then I ain't even talk about the activists that we know like Rafikas you know what I'm saying a lot of people don't know who Bishop is you know what I'm saying these cats are you know underground movement low to green thumb you know these cats are you know in D.C. rocking it with Beast and the urban uh, hippie movement man I 
I mean? But, you know, until we become together and we know and we start moving in these cities and we start supporting each other and understanding how the movement is flowing, how we keep the dollars so we can spend it within each other and support the things that believe in the same concept that we have. You know what I'm Once we understand that, that's what the movement comes. Now, again, we're asking everybody to be involved. We're not saying white. We're not saying black. We're not saying Korean, Asian, whatever it is. We're trying to say, hey, man, we all have to become part of this team. And if you want to be part of the Greenwood team, man, come on down. And we more than happily want to talk to students successful with drug policy. Drug policy in line. Marijuana policy project. Uh, 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 what is the NCI and National Cannabis Industry Association. All y'all who talking about y'all got a minority agenda. And if y'all not here, what is the fam that you're doing or who you're trying to get with if you're not where they all came together and try to come up with a plan? You should be trying to bust down the doors and be one of the first ones to either support it wind up advertising with it, doing something with it to show that you're really down with this movement. Other than that, again, we just said it. You're a leech. You know what I'm saying? You're leeching off the industry. And sooner or later, we'll understand the people we got to deal with to change that mindset or that concept. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I, I'm going to tell you like this. I put salt on leeches. I'm sorry. I just do. I put salt on leeches. But one person you did leave out. You left out the mover and shaker. And one year, she has turned this revolutionary process of medical cannabis and the world of cannabis on its ear. And I have to call her out. That name is Roz McCarthy, Minorities of Medical Marijuana. That chick is on fire. You hear me? I have, I've seen a lot of activists come along. And I'm not saying it because I'm part of her team. I'm saying it because she's real. And that's the reason I joined her team. Because I seen what Roz was putting out there. I seen what Roz was putting down. Roz has did some incredible work in a short period of time in one year. I can't wait to see what she does the next three to five years. So with those type of people that's going to be there in the ATL with myself and yourself, Coach, I'm going to tell you like this here. That's going to be a good meeting of some great minds. And if you're if you're part of the cannabis community and you're not to this event next Saturday and Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, you're wrong. Because this is the next wave. The wave came from the West. Now the wave is coming from the East. And this is going to be a tsunami effect. And we both know how big tsunamis get. Yeah, but you got, again, you got a lot of listeners who are like, oh, man, them just a bunch of people talking. But then again, like I said, you always look at the people, company that they keep. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Understand who the people you're walking with and the people who are actually out there doing that. That's why I say I, I kind of love Instagram for the simple fact you can always go back and check out the history of people and what they're doing. And, and this industry right here, there's so many movements talking to so many people that all are doing the same thing like we doing, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That actually becomes like our network, you know what I'm saying? Our network. You know what I'm saying? And now we got to say we have to we have to say that to that community. Now let's start structuring ourselves to where it is. When Ty them said that you know everybody once they start talking at these events, they should be more fully accepted them and be charged or something. Mm-hmm. So they can eat along with me. and again, like again, I want to make sure that you know I ain't got no money. I, I promise you, I ain't I ain't got all the money. I ain't got no problem with beating down my door. I want to hold this because you had the capital. Nobody else would have the conversation with you had, and you were able to put this together. And you got some of the biggest white like, individuals, companies that are out there at your event. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And ain't nobody saying, hey, coach, I want to show you this, I want to show you this. Everybody's coming in, and it's all crazy because that's what I want. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But, you know, again, when we get to the point where, you know, me, I'm about hospitality. I'm going to kill y'all with it. I'm going to try to shut it down your throat. I'm going to try to make sure y'all can't, you know what I'm saying, anything you want, you got, hey, man, that was the best time I ever had in my life. And, you know what I'm saying, boom. And back then, you're going to hear, you know, not rhetoric, but you're going to hear the conversation behind it. Like, why do we want to do this? You know what I'm saying? Because I'm tired of going to some of these events they have around the nation, and they don't really have nothing there for me. They don't have nothing to put us to rest. They don't have nothing to, they, it wasn't even thought about like any of it was for us. And yet, I got all these people who feel like me about men again. This was started on the back of our community. So, yo, we should start talking about these baby step issues that other people have. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, again, I, I got to give, give Kayvon this, man. And this Kayvon come out there from Second Half Hot Sex Pizza and uh, uh, NCIA. I give him this, bro. He's the only one I have seen out there trying to get with the minority organization. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And that's why, you know, I even, you know, I know the back end, I tell so many white cats who's doing it, man. They're so going to get down with NCIA, bro. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Because, my man is trying to do something, but mm-hmm. 
How you come to the table with me? I can you see a picture of my Instagram while I'm sitting there with him and Shay Penny, man. I heard and that. Got, and all them. And all them folks to be here, man. But you mm-hmm. know, I ain't got you know, I put the invitation out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna tell you like this here. I'm gonna um, go ahead and put this out there for you real quick. I have a super activist on my team named Dan, Dan Eagle. He can't be down because he's in California doing what he do right now. Believe it or not, he'll be. He would be there, and all he's already on Sunday is apologize to me and you both. That's why I'm expressing them here on the air today. But the next scenario that we the um, round two that's gonna have the golf tournament, he will be in in the building. Um, Dan okay, Eagle's one of my. Hey, we got a fly channel put it on social media. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Come jump off my Snapchat picture off my Instagram with this Coach 69 smoke. And if you down, just Snapchat it and put it on your thing. Again, it's just about aware, man, letting people know that this these type of conversations happen and that we come together and we're supporting each other. Right. And it ain't nothing but a, snap, a Snapchat or what is a snap pitch. And then reposting it, man, and that's all it is. Mm-hmm. And if we can't do that, man, you know, what good are we to the movement? You know what I'm saying? Man. Uh, <laughs> man, yeah, but you know what, Coach? We don't talk. We don't talk about the movement so much today, man. They probably think we revolutionaries. We are revolutionaries, and we revolution about getting people well. I don't know about you, but um, we don't march to the band a big farmer long enough. I mean, and look what it's got us. It's got a lot of us that's no longer here with us. I was sitting up here. Um, this is what motivates me when I do this show. Sometimes. I listen to different music, and if you got a chance, listen to Macklemore's Drug Dealer. That's a powerful song. That song has a personal message for me. And it, uh, Macklemore, it's called Drug Dealer. Okay. It's a, that song has a very deep message, and it's very close to my heart because I trusted my doctor. He got me hooked on Big Pharma, and it caused me a lot of problems. <laughs> that's for real I listen to that song every time before I do this show to keep me in mind to why I do this show and why I do the things I do because at the end of the day we want everybody to live as long as possible we want everybody to be healthy and successful in what they do and we're being handicapped we're actually handicapping ourselves hey go there I'm revolutionary, right? This is, I'm, I'm revolutionary, right? I'm with you on that revolutionary, right? But I'm, I'm American revolutionary, man, talking about coming back to the true American. And that's why I say, man, the first person that shot that was heard around the world was Christopher Atkins, right? right? That's a black man being killed, you feel me? So it takes black to wind up starting, you know, revolutions and to be a part of it, man, and understand that it's okay for that to be the, the thing when we rev up around the world. So now this is another solution or a shot that was heard about the mass incarceration and all that, you know what I'm saying? But now a movement can be done, even if you don't agree or disagree with that, one thing we all do agree on is what we call safe access and the right to medication, which you just said, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So my thing is, let's be American, let's be revolutionary, let's, let's be down for the team, let's get down with the Green Rush team. <laughs> And I know Miss Green Jeans is down with the Green Rush team, so I'm down with the Green Rush team. I'm down with Minorities for Medical Marijuana. So those are the two organizations I'm down with, and I'm proud. And like I said, I never thought I'd say this on air. I am proud to be part of those organizations, the Green Rush team and Minorities for Medical Marijuana, because I see what's coming in the future. And if you like me and you care about your outcome, you need to jump on one of these teams. How about joining us both? I mean, think about it. You join both teams now. And look what you got. You know, the people that you just heard. Me and Coach both, you know, talked to these people and I sat down and broke bread with them or, or something in that effect. Each person that he's named. We done came across these people and dealt with them and need some good people. Huh? To an individual that's down in Florida that's making moves happen real quick, you know what I'm saying? Right. You got access to that to wind up helping you do what you're doing in South Carolina. Right. And you got a lobbying arm to able be, be able to put your hands on politicians, you know what I'm saying, that you actually need to get to when you need to get them at any time. Right. And that made you a very powerful individual. And if Catherine's in South Carolina don't understand that, then, you know, we're going to keep moving on until people understand our value and what we stand for. Right. And that's what we're trying to do. 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 And that's because we have it, and we have some of the best values because we're creating those teams to make it happen. So I love you guys. 
Thank you so very much. Coach 69 Smoke on Instagram. Miss Green Jeans on Instagram. Now, if you didn't catch them too, I'm sorry for you. Coach, we're going to go ahead and wind it up. We got two minutes, so knock it out. Man, again, if you guys can come down to Atlanta, man, let us show you a little Southern hospitality. I actually got a birthday party on the 22nd that you guys are going to be all white. But it's really going to be about the industry leaders coming together and just really, you know, networking and power networking and just talking about things to wind up helping making the industry better. We are out beyond to be in the house. I don't know if you guys know Joe and those cats out of Denver, man, but they're really trying to do some good stuff in Atlanta. We got uh, Urban Jiffy trying to come together and put some things together. Dr. Uma. Let me shout out Dr. Uma and let me shout out Dr. Eric Mitchell and let me shout out Dr. Uh, you guys know Dr. Hodge from Buzz High School Atlanta, man. They can't, they've been putting some stuff together to these kids and if you go and look at their Instagram and see the things that they're doing, man, you'll see it's awesome. And again, we just try to bring these people together and understand that it's a community as long as we can start putting agendas together, agendas together, we can address the issues that we need to be addressed in our community and do it like, again, we want to riot. We just righteously initiate organized tactics. Come together and do it the right way. And on that note, we're going to get ready to end this show. Got, uh, wow. Coach, thank you again so much for coming on the air with me today and doing what you do best, motivating and getting the word and the message out there. Like I say, Coach, you always can put me in. That's our show for today, guys, on 710 Radio, iHeartRadio, Rosemary's World of Cannabis. And always, as I say, we have 29 states in the District of Columbia that have sex access. Unfortunately, I'm not in one of them, and we're trying to change that thing. Hey, y'all have a great weekend. We're out. We love you. Peace. SOS. Smoke one, son, for those out in Colorado. I'm out. Bye-bye.